Hey, uh, what's up guys? This is Halfway, broadcasting from around the world in Phenomenal Pen, Cambodia. Uh, first of all, before I make this video, today I, I opted to wear, I'm wearing red pants. How do you guys, how do you guys feel about red pants? <laughs> so I have, I have a pair of red pants and a pair of blue pants, like light blue pants, and I rarely wear them, but I feel like wearing them today. And the whole day I'm wearing them, I keep thinking to myself, I wonder if this was, I wonder if this was a good decision to wear red pants. I don't know how I feel about them. Whatever. Nice tie a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so. <laughs> Today's video. Whoa, woe is me. Whoa is me. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be talking about the woes of teaching English. Uh, yesterday we were speaking about, uh, about the joys of teaching. Today we're going to be speaking about the woes of teaching. And... In a weird position. It's in a weird position. Uh, so yeah, so today uh, we're going to be talking about like the woes or maybe negative things or things that aren't, you know, as joyful or as awesome about teaching. Uh, so first of all, if we start, let's start, uh, we can start with the students. Um, yesterday I was talking about the positives and the awesomeness of the students, but there's also a negative side. Uh, kids, I think in general, uh, whether it's in Phnom Penh, Cambodia or in any other place in the world, uh, they can be they can be little they can be little rascals, to put it really nicely. They can be jerks. Um, they can be really really loud. They can you know do what they want to do, not listen to uh, authority figures. You know, fight with each other. You know, have a lot of bickering and problems. And these are again generalized statements of children anywhere. Uh, but of course, that is going to be something that affects you here. Uh, as well as here, it can even be, in some ways, more than other places, possibly. Uh, if you think about a lot of the schools here, like if you're coming here to teach, you're probably going to be teaching at a private school. Uh, and, you know, depending on the type of school and how much it is and stuff, like, a lot of these students could be coming from families who have, you know, a lot of money. And, you know, either at home they could be spoiled or they can... Um, you know, not appreciate like authority as much as, as some other places. Uh, but you know, again, it doesn't really matter. This is a, a circumstance around the world and kind of, I, I would say even throughout history, uh, sometimes I get so aggravated when I see people from my generation, like complaining about like the youth today is so bad. Like, do you not remember when we were youths? Like, I remember when I was growing up, I think I was a pretty good kid. Um, once I got into like my older teens, I made, you know, some bad decisions, etc., etc. But as, as like a younger kid, I was, I was a pretty good kid, I would think. Um, but I remember, man, like if I went down to the park in my little town, like kids were fighting, cursing, doing drugs, like whatever. If um, there was like a church behind my house, if I went there to play basketball, same thing. Kids throwing rocks at each other, calling each other's names. Again, fighting each other, breaking things, smashing windows. And this is in like a very conservative small mountain town. And you know, that kind of stuff was still going on. So there's really no difference between like our youth today. And even, even talking on that, there's been for like thousands of years, literally thousands of years, people have been saying this exact same thing. The youth are so bad today compared to when we were youth. They're just different. Like the youth is different. Maybe they're bad in a different way, um, but essentially, like they're just as bad. Kids were just as disrespectful to elders when I was growing up as they are today. And I it, and it infuriates me when I see people from my generation because, like, dude, you just turned in my grandma. Like I remember when you know my grandma was saying, "You kids are so bad today," <laughs> and it's like, yeah, we were little assholes. We were kids, and now the kids today are being little assholes, but they're still kids. All right, I'm getting off topic a little bit, but yeah, so that's one thing. Um, you know, dealing with kids, but again, these are things that can be remedied. Uh, if you learn how to control the classroom, if you learn what works with your students and what doesn't work with your students, um, you know, any of these things, them being, you know, rude or, uh, you know, being loud, being, um, you know, selfish, fighting, these are all things that can be combated. And it's always going to happen, man. I have, uh, I have trouble with my students sometimes. Most of the times I have them reined in pretty good. Every once in a while they'll come in and there'll be a day when all of them are just acting crazy. Um, but for the most part, like, you know, they're pretty good now. And, uh, you know, so that's something that can just be accomplished in the classroom. But again, it's still, you know, it comes with the job. Okay, I'm comfortable sitting like this. It comes with the job. 
And so it is something that you'll have to, you know, manage and something that, you know, is a negative thing, is a woe of, of teaching. Uh, also, to kind of counter what I was saying yesterday, I might go, you know, flip sides and things here. Uh, I was talking about like the progress of my students and how awesome it is to see like your students growing and developing. But on the opposite side of that, there are some students that no matter what you do, no matter how much you work with them, uh, either A, their level of intellectual capability, the level of them being able to absorb knowledge is just not as good as the surrounding students. Uh, or B, they just have no desire to learn, they don't want to be in the classroom, they don't like things, they just don't want to do anything. And with these kids sometimes, again, no matter what you do, you can do everything you can possibly do and they just won't accelerate at the same level. And it's frustrating, depending on your personality type, uh, but it's something that, that bothers me a lot because I want all of my students to do really good for a couple of reasons. One. I want to be a positive influence in their life. I want them to, you know, grow up and get good jobs and be successful. And I want them to look back and be like, hey, you know, Teacher Joe, um, you know, is part of that cycle of, of them succeeding in life. Um, and also because I take it as a personal loss, um, even outside of them. I take that as, as me not doing my job good enough. And, you know, that's also very hurtful with A, if a student, you know, isn't doing well, and I feel like, what am I doing wrong? And even though in my head I know, again, like the situations and circumstances that I described before, these are students that clearly don't want to be there. These are students that don't enjoy learning. These are students that um, are, you know, so distracted by anything else around them. But it's irrelevant because it's still my job is to make sure that these students, uh, you know, learn and are educated. So if one of the students are is not, then Again, that's just a reflection on me. So I do take that personally. Uh, so that could be a woe. Uh, as well as students leaving the school. So I had, um, again, most of the schools here, if you're coming here to teach, you'll be teaching at a private institution. So the parents, you know, pick and choose where their kids can go to school, and there are a lot of them. But I had one of my students recently leave at the end of the last term. Uh, she was overall one of my best students. Um, in terms of her like knowledge and her ability to speak English and read and write, she wasn't at the absolute top, but she was toward the top of the class. But the best thing about her was she was always trying to help me. She was always like if the other kids were getting loud and rowdy, uh, she was always very quick to be like, hey guys, sit down, like I'm trying to learn. And she like wanted to learn and it was really awesome. And all of a sudden it was like the last day of the term and she was like, oh, this is gonna be my last day here. And I was like, what? Like A, like no warning. I was like, why? And she's like, I don't know, my parents want me to, you know, go, she took, she was going to another school part-time and this school part-time, and I guess she's going to that school full-time. But you know, again, that's something that I look at at me is like, damn, like, did I do something wrong? Was I not good enough? Did her parents not like me? Um, you know, and I, I don't have any answers because I, I never got any answers. They were just gone. Um, you know, so that's really disappointing and, you know, another woe. And especially, you know, like I was speaking about the other day, like, you know, you get attached to these students and, you know, they are a part of your life and then, you know, that kind of stuff happens. Um, so, you know, those are some of the biggest woes, the biggest cons, the biggest negatives are, you know, students in general, when they're not being cool, when they're being, you know, little, little, uh, what I say, little rascals, <laughs> being little jerks. Um, you know, if you feel like you're failing a student because they're not learning and they're not progressing in the way that they should be, or if a student leaves your school and you don't know why they left, Again, I hope it wasn't anything because of me. I hope it wasn't that they, you know, didn't like me as a teacher or whatever. And I don't actually believe that. But at the same time, I don't know. And I can't correct anything that could have happened because I don't know what the answer is. Uh, but yeah, guys, so there are, you know, really, really great things about working here. There are days when you're going to feel so good and so happy. And then there are days when, you know, things are going to suck and you're not going to be as happy. So, you know, just like any job or anything else, there's good and there's bad coming to Cambodia and living, there's good and there's bad. There's no, you know, if anybody, I think if anybody says it's only good here or it's only bad here, um, either they have an incredibly unique uh, experience here uh, or there might be a little bit of, uh, you know, some fabrication or some idea, ideal that they have about living here. Um, yeah, guys, that's all. So let me know how you feel about red pants. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know why I'm obsessed with my red pants. Well, let me know how you feel about red pants. Uh, what your thoughts are about, you know, the pros and cons of teaching here. Also, don't forget to add the Facebook page. So, uh, on uh, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. local Phnom Pen time, 10 a.m. local Phnom Pen time, sa Sunday morning, we do that Facebook live video. Also, send in your uh, halfway easy videos where you say, my name is whoever, I'm from wherever, and this is how I be easy, and show yourself doing something cool. Uh, and then, if you need to get a hold of me, I also have my personal email contact or the contact associated with this channel. Alright guys, halfway broadcasting from around the world, Phenomenal Pen Cambodia. Peace guys, be easy.